and guidance. He who is guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be taken astray by anyone. And he who is allowed by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be misguided cannot and will not be brought back to guidance by anyone on the face of this earth. I bear witness that there is no deity to be worshipped but Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his last messenger sent as a true guidance to humankind so that we could follow his example at all times, all places and under all circumstances. My dear children, sisters, brothers, may the peace, mercy and blessings of Almighty God be with each and every one of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have a slight request that will take my popularity a little bit down, but I'm hoping that I can bring it up again. And I'll tell you why it will start by dipping that popularity. And that is, I would like to request that anyone, I shouldn't say anyone because everybody has it, anyone who has a phone, I would request that you put it away, turn it off, because one thing that irritates me a lot is to be talking and seeing somebody. Okay, I don't like it. So uh, hopefully we are coming here for one purpose, and that is to learn about our deen and specifically about this great act of worship, this great gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, I don't know how you're feeling today. Today, you know, I woke up with more energy than usual, even though the hours of sleep were interrupted, very few hours, but it's Ramadan. And to start with today, I would like to ask you not to gaze at uh, space because I'm seeing somebody who's looking at some, uh, I won't say who it is, okay, because he changed now, he's smiling. Okay, so try to concentrate and let us start by giving the title of what I'm going to talk about. Inshallah, there will be four or five talks on Sunday. If the crowds ask for it, inshallah, I'll try to extend it as long as possible. Because this is what brings us together. You know, this is what makes us feel that we are one family. So for our leader, uh, Dr. Hassan Mustafa, I'm mentioning the title of the talk today. It's called The Spiritual Dimension of Ramadan. So I'm going to talk about the spirituality. Why should we feel great? Why should we feel happy? Why should we feel different? And to start with, I want to grab the best definition of fasting in Ramadan. And I want to get three guesses. Those who read, those who visit the internet for the right purpose, to tell me where I got the best definition of fasting in Ramadan. And I'll allow three of them. Okay, anybody who would like to volunteer first, number one, the best, best definition of what fasting in Ramadan is all about. And we need to define it in everything we need to do. We need to understand what is it? What is it? Okay, yes? Yeah, if you our... No, 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 no. Who, who, who did I take it from? What book did I get it from? Okay, so, so you're saying the Quran is the first? Uh, uh, okay, you agree with her? You agree with her? Everybody agree? Everybody agree? Can I disagree? <laughs> okay, you disagree, okay. What is it? Use what? Could we all use our phones now? Because I think we need our phones. Uh, no, 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 you don't need your phone. I'm talking now. Uh, I think it's the Bible. The Bible? Okay, uh, so that's number two. Number three? I'll make it four. Okay. You say it first. The Hadith. The Hadith. This boy. Uh, 
Okay, but do, you, do you agree or disagree with them? No. That's what you were going to say. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you believe them? He was going to say it. Shall we take five of them? Okay. Okay, okay, and that's, that's, I combine it with hadith, and I'll say I got the best definition of fasting in Ramadan from something that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said. And the reason I did not take the Qur'an, it's not because the Qur'an is inferior to hadith, ma'ad Allah, but the Qur'an commands us to fast, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us whatever the Prophet instructs you with, you take it. Whatever he says, don't do, don't do. So the Prophet gave us the definition of what we were commanded to do in the month of Ramadan. So are you ready with me to know if we are missing something because we want to get that definition that has everything. And Prophet Muhammad gave us that definition one day and the one who told us about that definition is one of his companions by the name of Salman al-Farisi. Salman al-Farisi told us that one day, Prophet Muhammad wasallam, the night before Ramadan started, which means that they prayed taraweeh and then Prophet Muhammad wasallam, talked to his companions about fasting in the month of Ramadan. So he said, Ayyuhal nas, O people, قَدْ أَظَلَّكُمْ شَهْرٌ عَظِيمٌ مُبَارَكٌ You are now shadowed by a great blessed month. The definition did not start yet, but we are getting there. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ قَدْ أَظَلَّكُمْ شَهْرٌ عَظِيمٌ مُبَارَكٌ شَهْرٌ فِيهِ لَيْلَةٌ هي خير من ألف شهر. A month wherein there is one night which is better and more worthy than a thousand months. جعل الله صيام نهاره فريضة. Now the definition. جعل الله صيام نهاره فريضة وقيام ليله تطوع. Allah made the fasting during its days as an obligation, and the standing up in prayer during its nights as a voluntary act. You may do it during the day. You've got to fast during the night. You may volunteer to wake up and stand up in prayer. مَنْ تَقَرَّبَ فِيهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ بِخِصْلَةٍ مِنْ خِصَالِ الْخَيْرِ كَانَ كَمَنْ أَدَّى فَرِيضَةً فِي مَا سِوَاهِ He or she who gets closer to Allah during this month. Aha, now part of the definition is this is the month where we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the way, yesterday I was sitting with a boy I love so much. And I told him something that usually, usually as we are walking or swimming or moving in an open space, let's say in the desert, they say even, even if you try to walk straight, you will find out after some time that no, 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 you are not going straight. Even in the sea, you know, if someone is in a boat and moving with the boat and say, no, I'm going to go straight, you can't. You will be going and curving and getting away from your target. Why? This is how it is. So if ever alone with somebody or, you know, you have no compass or no GPS or nothing like that, be careful. You will get away from your target. So as we are moving in the ocean of our lives, we are getting away from our target and that is Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every day, He says, come, come, adjust. Every day, five times. 
He checks how we are going and says, okay, okay, move a little bit here, there, five times every day. Once a week, he says, you know what? You've got a little bit to this side, come back. And then once a year, for an entire month, he gives us a training in how to use our GPS of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will take us to Jannah. And once in our lifetime, when we go to that place in Mecca, we get adjusted and we keep going towards Jannah, inshallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, come close to me. I love you. I want you to get your target. مَنْ تَقَرَّبَ فِيهِ بِخِصْلَةٍ مِنْ خِصَالِ الْخَيْرِ كَانَ كَمَنْ أَدَّى فَرِيضَةً فِي مَا سِوَى If you try to do something good in this month wherein you want to discover the goodness in yourself, you want to, to find out how good am I? If you do something good that nobody asks you to do it, you find something outside that may hurt someone who is walking and may not see it and will fall and break his leg or her leg and you just remove it, and put it aside, that will be rewarded as if you've done a full Salat. Salat al-Zuhr, for example, or Asr. It will be rewarded as though you have done something which is an obligation. And we know in the Hadith al-Qudsi, Allah said, nothing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than to do a faridah. Allah loves to do His faraid the best, the most. So if you do something voluntary out of your own search for goodness, try to find out what is it I can do that will make me discover how good I am. But don't go and tell others about it. Keep it to yourself. وَمَنْ أَدَّى فِيهِ فَرِيضًا كَانَ كَمَنْ أَدَّى سَبْعِينَ فَرِيضًا فِي مَا سِوَاهِ And he or she who will perform one thing which is fault. Salat al-Fajr, Salat al-Dhuhr. You know the Salat al-Dhuhr that we just prayed? It is registered now in our book of record as if we prayed 70 Salat al-Dhuhr in, in, in Ramadan. You woke up for Fajr, it is registered as if you have performed 70 Salat al-Fajr because it is Ramadan. Out of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us doing those fara'id. وهو شهر الصبر وثوابه الجنة. The month of Ramadan is the month of patience. Yes, it is a long day. And now for the next four years, Ramadan is going to be very long during the day. Yes, and there are people near the equator who are fasting for 12 hours while we are fasting for 17 and a half hours. And people in Edmonton are fasting for 18 and a half hours. And you know what? If we do it out of patience and we say, Ya Allah, we are doing it because you asked us to do it. No questions on our side. We're not going to ask why. It's not fair. Why are they fasting shorter? With you know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not looking at our hunger and thirst. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we really spiritually want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will engage our minds in such a way that we will not even feel it. Certain days, we've got to feel it because it's good to feel it. And I'll tell you why it's good to feel it. Give me five minutes and I'll tell you why it's good to feel hungry. Why sometimes it's good to feel a headache. It's good to feel that you're tired. It's good to feel, you know, a little bit searching for some happiness that runs away from you and, and you go and run after that. It's good to feel all of those things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan, He gives us a gift of hunger, a gift of thirst, a gift of getting weak, a gift of all of these things. And I'll explain to you why it's a gift. وَهُوَ شَهْرُ الْمُوَسَاتِ It is the month wherein you have to think of other people who are less fortunate than you are and comfort them. There are people that we do not know, but we know about them. They are in refugee camps where there is, by the way, no AC, no air conditioning in those tents in the desert. 
Yesterday, when we stood for Taraweeh, okay, after we finished Aisha, we said, what's happening to the air condition? We can't take it, it's so hot. And rightly so, nobody, nobody said that you, 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 you shouldn't uh, ask about it. But look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan makes our hearts soft. And if you don't feel soft in your heart, and thinking about others before you think about yourself, then you did not put the first step yet into the doorway of Ramadan. Ramadan requires that, yes, outside of Ramadan, I get angry of that, I get angry at that, I get upset because of this, I do this, I do that. But now in Ramadan, it's a different story altogether. It is different. I've got to think about others. I have to think less about the me in me, always, you know, I am inconvenienced, I don't like it, I want to, there are people who are not going to complain as we do, even if they get at the end of the day, little bit cool, not cold, cool glass of water, if they get it, and if it is clean, they will be jumping up and down of happiness, but for us, we may just reach to our fridge and put as much ice as we want and then we put the water and then we drink and then we say we want juice and then we want this and that and that is all lawful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have given us in this life equally all of us because by the way he loves all of us equally even when we make lots of mistakes he still loves us and he says Come back to me. And in Ramadan he's saying, come back. I want you. I love you. You know, it's, it's something we've got to know. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the month of Ramadan, helps us to, to clean the inner self that gets dirty for 11 months. So now Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says in the definition, in the definition, he says, فَمَنْ تَقَرَّبَ فِيهِمَا أَوْ فِي رَمَضَانِ مِنَ اللَّهِ فِي أَرْبَعِ خِصَالٍ أَرْضُ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى We need to do four things during the month of Ramadan to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, خَصْلَتَانِ خَصْلَتَانِ ترضون بهما ربكم وخصلتان لا هنا لكم عنهما that two of the four practices you cannot survive without and two you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with and the things that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and loves to see you and hear from you is number one shahada to an la ilaha illallah wal istighfar. These things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to see on us. To live, to live according to la ilaha illallah. There is no authority, no authority that can bypass the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this is what I want to say to the young people who would say, what is la ilaha illallah? You know, every time they tell us, you have to live according, what do you mean? I mean that if you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there is Salatul Maghrib at 909, then if I am watching a movie or attending a meeting or having a non-Muslim friend over or whatever, the authority of Allah is number one. So you tell whoever it is, I have to pray. And you don't say, what will they say? Uh -huh. You know, if you, if you say, what will they say? It means that the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is either the same or even less than the authority of other people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants his authority to be at the top. And there is a rule in Islam, لا قاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق if someone, if someone comes to you and commands you to do something against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you say, no way. 
No way. If someone, look, I'll give you the ultimate example, had the province of Quebec passed a law saying you cannot, sister, wear your hijab in a public place, you would say, I am sorry, I have to. That's it. I have to. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you've got to, that's it. So now the month of Ramadan teaches us, teaches us for an entire month to live by our Islam. And that is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And number two, number two, to just say the equivalent of sorry. You turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Ya Allah, I'm sorry for what I have done. I ask for your forgiveness. Please forgive me. I made so many mistakes. I did this and this and this and that. And you know, here I'd like to stop. Stop not to, to finish, you know, no. But I want everybody to pay attention to me. Everybody listen to me carefully. Old, young, it doesn't matter. I want us to go home and make two columns. Two columns. One column, the mistakes I've made in the past year until today that I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive for me. Write it down. I yelled at my mother. I uh, missed uh, Fajr on purpose. I was up, mind you, but uh, I was too lazy and, uh, you know, and I missed it. I was of the habit of uh, overeating. I was of the habit of, uh, uh, you know, in Salat to uh, just uh, look around me and just uh, fool around. I was of the habit of, I told a few lies in the last year. I, uh, you know, what, write it down in one column and say, these are the mistakes I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive. It's okay. No, it is not uh, tacky. It is not. Because now it's a relationship one on one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the other column, in the other column, I want all of us to write the things we want to start doing to become the good Muslims we want to be. Say in this column if you want. I'm not telling you what to write in it. Each one of us will have a list different than the other. But just say, you know, I never used to insist on Salat al-Fajr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I know, and Prophet Muhammad taught me that there are five daily Salat, not four, and the Qadr. As many people say, there are four prayers, and one that you make up whenever you can. This is not what Islam is all about. Salat is on time. And Salat al-Fajr has to be the, ah, the way we grab barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a comparison in Surah Al-An'am. And he compares people who really pray on time and those who really just take it easy. And he says, فَأَيُّ الْفَرِيقَيْنِ أَحَقُّ بِالْأَمْنِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us, tell me who is more worthy of my gifts of peace and tranquility. This group that wakes up for Fajr and prays on time and, and loves to pray and enjoy Salah or the other group that just said, eh, whatever it comes, think about it. Now, the other list, so one list is, Ya Allah, I want you to forgive this. And the other list, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, I want to do this in Ramadan. After Ramadan, you know, on the first of Shawwal, I want to be different than the 30th of Shaban in this way. Now, somebody did not understand. What did I say? First Shawwal, 30th Shaban. Do you understand what I mean? Okay, Ramadan is between Shaban and Shawwal. So the 30th of Shaban, the Islamic calendar, is the last day before the beginning of Ramadan. And first of Shawwal is the first day after Ramadan. So on the first of Shawwal, 
I want to be a better person. Otherwise, otherwise, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would have defined, would have defined Ramadan by saying, okay, in Ramadan, you have to stop eating and drinking from dawn or before dawn until sunset. This is not, this is, this is just the way, the way you can get to where you want to get. You know, who goes to the gym? Who goes to the gym? Nobody, okay? Nobody goes to the gym. Now, uh, you go to the gym? Yes. Uh, it doesn't show. <laughs> you go to the gym? To do what? To play. No, but who goes to the gym to, to work out? Kadri, you go to the gym. But you, you use the gym, right? Sometimes. Sometimes. But I want somebody who goes to the gym. Sometimes. 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 Okay. You go to the gym. MashaAllah. Okay. Now, when you go to the gym, is your purpose to get tired and do this? Is, is this what you are going? Why do you go to the gym? To get more energy the next day. Uh-huh. So your purpose is not to get, but you've got to do it in order to have the six pack. <laughs> yes, I understand what six pack is. Don't look at me and laugh and say, you know, how did he know that? Okay, so you like, you like to, to show your muscles and feel strong and you like that, don't you? Makes me stronger at work. Stronger at work, stronger in life, fit, you know, all of these things. This is why we go to the gym and the same thing. We stop eating and drinking not because, not because we really, this is Ramadan, you know, we get hungry and thirsty. But we do that in order for us to become better Muslims. And now you may say, what do you mean if you get hungry? If you get hungry, how can you be a better person? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran Kareem, وَلَنَمْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Al-Baqarah that you will be given lessons in getting afraid sometimes because if you get afraid of عِمَاد حَيْدَرْ you will slow down. You know what I mean? Okay. Honestly, if you get afraid of the car, you slow down and then you avoid getting into an accident. So it is good to be afraid. That's why, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran talks about khashiyatullah. Khashiyatullah. It is not because we have to be, you know, no, 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 no. But we've got to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we will not lose his love. بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ You know, when you get hungry, it is shown that when your fluid content in your body gets less, you become softer inside you. You start to think of others. You start to, to really have feelings towards others. Now, there are people who will be fasting today, but you know what? They will not have a feast waiting for them at the end of the day. And they know that. And they are fasting. And you know what? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there were days in his life, in his life, when he basically just broke his fast on a date and a dry piece of bread immersed in oil. And he just ate it and that was the way he broke his fast. Today, and I want to advise mothers and fathers who cook as well, I want to ask you this Ramadan please. And I start with my wife, wherever she is, okay. I, I, will, I, will, I will ask, please, let us try the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
We have deviated way too far and as a result, we ended up getting overweight in Ramadan, becoming lethargic in Ramadan. We become weak in Ramadan. We become sick in Ramadan. Why? And people ask you, are you crazy? Look what happened to you. It's not because of Ramadan. It's because we are not fasting properly. And you say, uh -huh, now, you say, what do you mean not fasting properly? We stopped eating and drinking. Yes, but now when you, go, and number one, I know, I know, especially among the Arabs, even if they are going to beat me up, it doesn't matter. But I will say the Arabs are guilty, and I know that right when it says Allahu Akbar, there's no such thing as the three dates and the water, usually. It's just the food dumped into the stomach, and then they go and stand up to pray Maghrib, they are unable to stand. Why? Because now they are carrying, you know, a bag full of food. And you know what? You know what? Protein does not bring you energy. Uh, lipids do not bring you energy. Uh, it's sugar. So what you really need to do are the dates. The dates, make them three, not 30. Make them three and a little bit of water and then allow the sugar to be absorbed. And when it is absorbed, Wallahi, as you say, Allahu Akbar, I'm feeling, I'm feeling fine again. Why? Because in three to five minutes, it's absorbed into your bloodstream, it goes to your cells, and you're feeling good. Right? So, this is how we should do it. And, and, let us pray Maghrib after that. And then after that, let us eat a modest meal. A modest meal. And I'm saying modest, let us really, let us really have one kind, okay, with some soup, and that should be okay. And girls, boys, don't complain to your parents, but we've been fasting. Oh, actually, actually, if we want now the spirit of Ramadan to be upon us, Let's follow the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay. Now, before I go any further, I would like to go back to the four things that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said: You've got to live by the authority of Allah subhanahu wa taala as number one, and this is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And then you should seek. This is the list. Ya Allah, please forgive me for this and this and this and this. Please make those lists. Please make them. Write them down. Put them on your iPhone, do whatever. And then the two things that will you cannot live without, the two things is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah and to seek refuge in Him from the hellfire. Because if you really do not think of Jannah and the hellfire and you live your life without asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma inna nas'aluka ridaka wal jannah, O oh Allah, we ask you for your acceptance of our deeds and Jannah as a result. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take you to Jannah. And Ramadan is that month that shows you the way very clearly. Now, this is one thing and I want now, I know that the young people may feel, but I'll try to simplify what I'm going to say next. And what I'm going to say next is this. There are people who have businesses. Who has a small business? Who is a small business? Nobody? Nobody has a small business? Okay, now, a small business. Now, what do you dread, you hate, you dislike, imagine, God forbid, if, if the CRA, Canada Revenue Agency, okay, will call you or send you a letter and say you will be audited starting on such and such day. You know what's audited? Audited means, young children, listen to me, audited is for the tax revenue agency will call a business and will say, we have some questions about the numbers you have sent to us to pay your taxes. So we are going to come ourselves and review your files, paper by paper, number by number, expense by expense, and we will decide. And oh, oh, oh. 
if they find that you've been doing things the wrong way, you know something I want everybody to real, realize? That each one of us will be audited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some are audited before others. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to review every single file, every little paper, every word we said, every website we visited, every haram we put our eyes on, every haram we listened to, every haram we said is going to be written in files. And if we think that, well, you know, it happened three years ago, oh, yeah, it's gone now. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran tells us, you forget, but Allah does not. You forget, but Allah does not. On the day of your audit, my audit, her audit, his audit, everything is going to be looked at. Now, in the month of Ramadan, look at the lists I mentioned. It is your attempt to bring your papers. The paper of the lies that I made in the past year, I will organize them and you know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, different than people, you know, the CRA, Canada Revenue Agency, will not accept from you, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. They, they don't accept it. They say you have to, to pay, and you have to pay a penalty, and if they see that you are doing something on purpose, there are penalties beyond paying money. But the difference between people and the CRA and others who do not forgive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, in the hasanat yudhibna sayyat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us good deeds erase bad deeds. That's how it is. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, good deeds erase bad deeds. So this month, we lived for this month. We don't know if we will live for the end of this month. Inshallah, we will live because it is a month of gifts. We are taking gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But look at this. We have a chance for all our previous sins, all of them. All of them, they will be forgiven, forgiven and we will start anew on the first of Shawwal. But if we do not take that seriously, we lost our chance and now it is being piled. And if we continue piling those things until we pass, we think that we sold our business and now, you know, CRA will keep records for 10 years. And may, after 10 years of you selling your business, may come to you or after you. And say, you've got to pay your penalty with all the interest. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps giving us chances, one Ramadan after another. One Jumu'ah after another. One Salat after another. One Umrah after another. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that. Al-Jumu'ah to Al-Jumu'ah, Wal-Umrah to Al-Umrah. Wa Ramadan to Ramadan. مكفرات لما بينهن إذا اجتنبت الكبائر إذا اجتنبت الكبائر provided we avoid major sins and one day I will talk about the seven major sins major these are major major sins if you avoid the major sins and you make mistakes now on Jumu'ah say Ya Allah Yesterday I did this, I ask you to forgive me. Until Friday. Or if you've been accumulating things now for over 11 months, now this is Ramadan. Ramadan is not only to be hungry. You get hungry because you are thinking of a boy like you, of a girl like you, in a refugee camp, in a tent, who is hungrier than you are. So it makes you feel that I am, I am you know, I'm feeling with somebody. I, I, I want to be good by thinking of that. And you know what? I want each one of us to save as much money as we can. And this year, we are going, inshallah, to have a portion of that. We will send it to those people. So if you want to 
distribute your sadaqah, your charity. We will give part to those people living in those tents to, you know, help them to bring a smile on their faces, whatever the case may be. Whatever the case may be. But this Ramadan, we want our sins to be forgiven. And I'll tell you now the story that I've told 73,000 times. Because it is relevant. You know the story of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and Jibreel Alayhi salam. You know boys, girls who did not hear the story of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Jibreel. I want to see a show of hands. You did not hear it? Can I see a show of hands? Otherwise I won't tell you the story. Okay, because of you I'll tell the story. Because you look genuine. I'll tell you the story. You know one day Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went up his member, you know member, okay? He wanted to talk to people. So when he went on the first step, he stopped, he stopped. And then everybody and his companions was looking at him. Why did he stop? And then after he stopped, he lifted his hands up and he said, Ameen. Then he went on the second step. And he stopped. And then after a little while he said, Ameen. And then he went on the third step. And he stopped. And then he said, Ameen. Then he turned and looked at his companions and he said what he wanted to say. Then he came down. When he came down, his companions came and made a circle around him. And they said, Oh Messenger of God, why did you do that? Because it sounded very strange. So listen, what he said to them, he said at the first step, Jibreel, you know the archangel Jibreel, came to me. They did not see him, but Prophet Muhammad saw him and heard him. Jibreel came to me at the first step and he said, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, Rahima Anf, Man Adraka Ramadana, Walam Yughfar Lah. He said, Ya Muhammad, a loser is he or she who receives the month of Ramadan and does not get his or her sins erased. What a loser if he receives Ramadan and still did not do the right thing to get his sins erased. What a loser, as if to say, what a loser. And then Jibreel said to Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, say Ameen. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ameen, to tell us, don't be losers. It's a chance. No matter how many mistakes you made, no matter how much in grudges you help for others or you don't talk to others, or this is Ramadan, this is your chance to become a better person. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ameen. Then on the second the step, listen children, and all of us are children. Not necessarily by age, because you will know what I mean by children. Because Jibreel came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi on the second step as well. And he said, Ya Muhammad, Rahima Anf, Rahima Anf, Man adraka abawahu indahu al-kibara, wa lam yudkhilahu al-jannah. He said, Ya Muhammad, what a loser is he or she whose parents reach old age in her or his life and does not treat them well to take her or him to Jannah. Meaning, what a loser is a child. All of us are children of parents. What a loser is he who mistreats his parents because if he or she does that, he is going to the other place other than Jannah. But if your parents are with you and you do things to please them even though, even though sometimes they don't understand. Sometimes, mom, don't be silly. Astaghfirullah. How can someone say to his mother or father, don't be silly? You know what that means? How can someone, someone talks to his parents 
in a way by even, even just trying to respond in an angry way and just says, oh, even saying, oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, you know, just saying, oh, to your parents, by the way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on purpose, on purpose makes all of us go through a cycle where we started as children when we used to make sounds and looking in the sky. Imagine if I do that now in front of you, but if a child, okay, would go around doing that, that's a baby. That's a baby. And now, as we grow older, we start to think like babies. And now, the children that used to think like babies and their parents hold them and laugh. Now when we will become at that age and will behave like babies, our children now are going to be sick and tired of us. We used to laugh for you and with you. And now you will be la not laughing, you will be yelling and saying, Oof, what a misery. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I'm going to keep that change in your life. If you deal with it properly, this is your ticket to Jannah. But if you will deal with it logically, because you know logic says, I have no time for this nonsense. You know, you go to your parents and then they tell you something that you as an adult now will consider nonsense. And then if you say, I have no time for this, and then you rush out the door, not only you lost your chance in Jannah, but you got closer to the hellfire. So Jibreel came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said that if your parents are living with you, and do not take you to Jannah, what a loser you are. So Ramadan, Ramadan, with all the hunger, all the thirst, all the, now we will go outside, by the way, it's very hot outside, and people, women, men will be half naked, and that, you know, now, shaitans are locked. If you will look at the half naked people, it, you, it will be yourself inside, Al-Ammara. It will be yourself inside that is saying, look, not the shaitan, because shaitan is locked. If you will go and now waste your time on websites that are dot, 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 and I say to kids, I know, there are things on the internet called pop-ups. And even our innocent children who are going on the internet and those pop-ups come, they may become curious. And they will look at the haram. Can I ask you during Ramadan, and I know your response, if I get 5% of you, to buy into my suggestion, I'll be happy. 5%. May I suggest that you cut your usage of your iPhone or cell phone or whatever to only two hours a day, only period. I know you'll say, what? <laughs> two hours? May I ask you and replace those two hours Replace them by working on the lists that you made. On working on the spirituality of this month. You say, no way, on the first of Shawwal, I will not do those things again. And on the first of Shawwal, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that my parents will be surprised of my behavior. You know, I've never prayed regularly, but my parents are going to be so surprised to see me wake up for Fajr on the first of Shawwal and continuing like this. I want to surprise my, my mother, my father, whoever, 
works at home, I will surprise them by giving them a hand all the time. I will surprise them by showing how much I care for their well-being. I will surprise my community in coming and, and helping and, and doing this and doing that. You know what? Wallahi, the door is wide open. The door is wide open. A young man by the name of Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Mu'ad ibn Jabal asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as, Ya Rasulullah, can you, can you show me something that will get me close to Jannah and away from the hellfire? You know what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them? He just mentioned to him the five pillars of Islam. He said, do the five pillars of Islam. He said it in a nice way, but I'm doing it quickly. Then, as Mu'ad ibn Jabal was trying to leave, he said, Ya Mu'ad, come back, come back. He said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. He said, do you want me to tell you something more? Said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. What do you want to tell me? He said, do you want me to tell you about the doorways that open to goodness? If you open the door, you will find lots of good things behind the door. You know what's the first thing he mentioned? Rasulullah he said, as Jannah. He said, when you fast properly, that's the first doorway to goodness. The first doorway to goodness. Now, back to Jibreel. Now on the third step, Jibreel came to Rasulullah and this is what we have to learn. This is what we have to learn. He came and he said to him, Ya Muhammad, a loser is he or she in whose presence you are mentioned and does not say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if I say Muhammad, what do you say? <laughs> Never say it or hear it or read it without saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Always, always. So the three things, don't be a loser. Don't be a loser. Don't be a loser. This is Ramadan. Don't exit Ramadan after 30 days without having all you or most of your sins erased. This is your chance. And don't let your parents be the cause of Allah's anger with you. And number three, don't ever hear Muhammad without saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I just want to wrap it up and just say that inshallah next Sunday we will talk about some practical tips in Ramadan. But today I want to remind us that we need to take Ramadan seriously and we need to stop being arrogant. You know, quite often we say, but he doesn't understand. I'm not going to talk to so-and-so because she started it. He started it. He did this, he did that. This is arrogance. You know, Islam teaches us, even though, even though it's not my mistake, I was not at fault. But Islam says, if you want, if you want, great reward if you want your sins to be erased take the first step yourself yourself even though it's not your mistake this is islam this is islam and make sure now you start to organize your papers for the audit so that when the time comes everything will be organized everything will be filed properly everything will be written properly for you everything and you want your mistakes and your sins to be erased. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you. And I will take, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, six minutes before three. We will just stop at three. And I will, uh, you know something, Malish, I know that had it been not Ramadan, it would be, you know, long. But what else do we have other than when we go let us read Quran. You know, I will talk about the Quran next week, inshallah, as well. But Quran, Quran. But I don't know how to read Quran. It's okay. Sit with somebody who can teach you. But do not take this book 
where in, in Surah number 25, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is reported in here, Surah number 25. What's, what's the name of the Surah number 25? Surah Al-Furqan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ The Messenger said on the Day of Judgment, يَا رَبِّي يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا Oh Allah, it wasn't my fault, but my people took the Qur'an as deserted. They just put it on a shelf and let it collect dust. They don't know how to read the book that was sent to them to show them how Islam is to be lived. How do you expect to? And I asked the boy I love so much yesterday, Yesterday I said, how, no, I'm not talking about my son. I love my son very much, but it's the one beside him because we are talking. You know, how do you make the best use of your uh, ISC5, that's W, whatever you call it. Yeah, he's laughing at me. Okay, those uh, iPhones, how do you, he says, I watched a video that showed me all the ways I can make the best use of, uh -huh. so, you watched a video because you want to use every little thing in it. And you know, this book is filled with miracles, with ayat that bring shifa, healing, with tips on how to, to, to succeed in life, with everything. This book, don't you want to know everything about this book? So read it, no? <laughs> Kids are beautiful, mashallah, mashallah. Yes. So, so, so please, this is the month of the Qur'an. Now, five questions, five questions, yes. Uh, we just a call on uh, behalf of our uh, community for this very informative and important presentation or lecture that we say. My question is that at the beginning of your uh, a lecture, you mentioned hadith, Ya Ayyuhan Nas. So how come that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu addressing Ya Ayyuhan Nas, although Ramadan is for Muslims, you should yes. have said, Ya Ayyuhan So what is your comment on this? Okay, now you know that the Quran and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they address Ya Ayyuhan Nas, Ya Bani Adam, Ya Ayyuhan Ladina Amanu, you know, categories of people depending on <coughs> the kind of message to be delivered. Now, in that particular hadith related by Salman al-Farisi and reported by Ibn Khuzayma, it is written as, Ya Ayyuhal Nas. Now, I am not going to speculate, but I will say probably that the month of Ramadan does not only come, you know, to the Muslims. The month of Ramadan eventually is meant for all of mankind because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ So the month of Ramadan potentially brings rahmah to the entire humanity. In Ramadan when shayateen are locked, it's not only the shayateen that affect Muslims. It is shayateen, all of shayateen that affect Muslims and non-Muslims. So what people end up doing it's from their own inner shaitan, inner self. It's the evil that is inside us. It is not the shaitan that is influencing us. And God knows best. We really don't know any more than that. Uh, any other question? Number two, question. Question, inshallah, it's going to be our best uh, ever. No question. We still have two minutes. Two minutes. Yes. Jazakallah khair, barakallah fiqh, I love making your words account. Just to make everybody aware, especially the young ones, how bitter the devil is in the ways that he come on his agents to, to deviate us, young and old, of course, the messages for everybody. Just to elaborate a little bit about this. Uh, you know, I gave a khutbah uh, one Friday about shaitan and about uh, how, you know, uh, and I spoke about Qareen and I spoke about everything. 
And the answer actually, I would like to refer, you know, we still have on the uh, center website all the Friday khutbas. Now you can go and check that particular khutbah where I talked in detail, in detail about what shaitan means and how does shaitan influence us. So I would like to ask you, go and check, you know, those khutab and particularly that one so that you know how shaitan affects us, inshallah. Any other? Jazakumullah khair. I would love to see all of us go taraweeh tonight and make it to Fajr, make it, you know, make this place a special place as you're trying to improve yourself. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa